Good to see you guys. So, does anybody know what today is? Father's Day. You gave him the gifts already? Did your dad demand them early? <laughs> He's not in here, is he? Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, we did our gifts early too. What do you do on Father's Day? Obviously, you give your dads some gifts, I guess. Yeah, but kids' days are like birthdays. Kids' days are birthdays. Yeah, Father's Day is for dads, right? Okay. Any other ideas? What, what do we do on Father's Day? What's that? Yeah, it is Sunday too. That's right. Which is pretty cool because on Father's Day, we also especially remember our Heavenly Father, right? God. Yeah. So we remember our Heavenly Father today as well as our earthly fathers. Okay. Well, I was looking through some stuff. I have a, a couple of cards here. One from my stepmom. My mom died from cancer when I was a teenager and then dad remarried. And so my stepmom has been around longer than my mom was, but she always sends me a Father's Day card. And then I found this card and she gave me a few days ago. Garfield in the 90s was, you know, pretty popular. Uh, I gave this card to my dad. It says, Dad, you deserve a lot of the credit for the way I turned out. Credit is a nicer word than blame. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. <laughs> you know, I hardly remember writing this card, but it was 25 years ago. Um, and it says, Dad, Happy Father's Day to the man who taught me about basketball, singing, fishing, History, speech, Jesus, forgiveness, love, kindness, friendliness, sensitivity, work, taking care of pets, driving, mowing lawns, gardens, irrigating, managing money, eating ice cream, and most of all, how to be a Christian. So that was what I wrote for my dad 25 years ago. So what, I, what we do on Father's Day when we give our dads gifts or we send them a card or like my stepmom sending me a card is we are honoring our fathers among us, okay? What does that word honor mean? Have you heard that word before? Okay, kind of a word we don't use a lot of, but uh, to honor someone is to say, you're important, you know? I, I want to tell you that you're important to me. I want to honor you today, okay? And so we honor our fathers amongst us, but also we're going to be reading the Word of God today, and we honor God, and we're going to see about how we should honor some other people in our world today too. So the Word is going to teach us about how we relate to some other people today. So think about that word honor, that we give, we give thanks and we show other people that they're important and that we honor them, okay? All right, thanks for your attention, guys. Why don't you go back to your seats now? All right, and now everybody go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 11. Many of you were here last week when um, Mike Soto and most of his family were here with us. And Mike is, uh, Mike and Andrea and their kids are a missionary family uh, on their way to Ukraine uh, in August. And I just wanted to share with you that I heard a few days ago from Mike and he said that they have received all of the financial support that they need. They have every last dollar uh, accounted for that God has provided for everything that they need. So uh, we have a part to play in that. And Mike just wanted me to share with you one more time how uh, honored he felt to be here with us uh, last week and uh, that uh, they are set to go. So I just wanted to share that with you. So we've been looking at the, the book of First Peter and we have been thinking about this idea that we who are Christians live differently from the rest of culture around us. We seem a little strange, a little alien, a little foreign when we say Jesus is in charge of my life that looks different from somebody that says, I'm going to live however I want, okay? So it's kind of like we're living in exile. We're reminded in the Word that we're like aliens and exiles, that our, our citizenship is in heaven. 
that uh, we're passing through, that we're pilgrims on our way there. How do we live as exiles here in this world? We're looking to the next, but we also want to be productive and faithful while we live here. And I want to start with this today. I just have to be really honest on some things today as I come to this text. I do not like to be political. I like to avoid talking politics. And especially in the last few years, um, man, I have just seen relationships become extremely strained uh, because of conversations about who's doing what, what we should be doing, and what laws, and blah, 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 on and on and on. Mainly it means bashing different politicians, you know, which, hey, I'm all for that sometimes, but... Um, I really, I really hate that. I like to be at peace with all people. And so the last few years have been, last couple years especially, have been difficult for me. And I have found myself wanting to sort of run and hide in order to maintain relationships with people. We live in a time where people are really polarized. It's, it's interesting, uh, Eliana and Elise and I have been watching a uh, documentary series on um, Bobby Kennedy, who was a Democrat. And it's interesting, the things that he was speaking about are very much in line with uh, a lot of the things Republicans are in line with. And you look back a few decades, and it, it doesn't seem like at that time there was a lot of difference between the two parties, whereas now there's a huge gulf that keeps getting stretched out more and more. Okay. I'm not going to talk very long about this, but I just wanted to tell you here, because of the text that comes up today, we have to think politically, okay? And it's interesting because my little daughter, Eliana, who's 15 now, and when when she was three years old, I can remember her being terrified of being around people and hiding behind my legs or mom's legs or whatever, and now she's just like all up. She's ready to talk about everything that she believes and feels, and I'm very proud of her. But she asked me one day, she said, Dad, how come we don't have an American flag hanging at our house? I had to think about that for a little bit. And I said at first, well, I don't know. The American flag kind of makes me feel like, is this a business or a government building or a school or something? It just doesn't feel like a home. Then I thought about that more. I'm like, no. I think it's because I just sort of want to play it safe because some people may see that and think certain things about me, make assumptions about what I believe and that kind of thing. And I just want to avoid all of that. Well, if you look through this window here, you can see an American flag hanging (laughs) here in my backyard here where my family spends a lot of time. Um, Part of that is because I went to honor the stand that my daughter is taking, but also because I'm realizing, you know what? I've been talking about how we need to stand for what we believe in, that as exiles, uh, we have to be firm in what we believe. And I want to tell you that I believe we are Christians first and Americans second, okay? It's not the other way around. Yeah, that's very important for us to remember that, that our citizenship is in heaven, but we're also Americans, but we need to have our priorities straight. Number one is God, okay? Number two here is my country. And we can stand for the values that God shows us that are consistent with Scripture. That's an important conversation for us to have today because of the passage we're going to read, okay? And, you know, eventually here when this goes up on YouTube, I don't know if it's going to get like, you know taken down or censored or anything like that. We'll, we'll see what happens. But um, anyway, 1 Peter 2, verse 11, and we're going to read through 17. And I know a couple of weeks ago I read to the end of, um, through verse 12, but I want to pick up that, those couple of verses again as I move into this because they're connected. All right. If it's convenient for you, will you stand with me as I read the word? First Peter 2.11, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, 
which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Thank you. Be seated, please. Okay, so it's summer break, but we're going to have a little English 101 here today, and I'm sure everybody is super excited about this. When you look at what we just read here, you see different kinds of sentences when you're reading anything, okay? One of them is called a, uh, a, a statement or a, a declarative type sentence, as in John Whitener just yawned. Okay, that's a, that's a statement. It's a true statement, by the way. I just saw that. So, okay. <laughs> okay. There are uh, other kinds of statements called exclamations, as in, um, man, I can't wait for my wife to get home. Okay. And that's also a true statement. She's in Colorado right now for a wedding, and I wish my cousin would have picked a different day. But anyway. There are also questions, okay, whenever you read a statement like that, that has a question mark at the end, it's asking something like, why did my cousin have her wedding on Monday, so my wife has to be gone today? That's a question, okay? Or commands, these are imperatives, okay? This is something that you must do, okay? Now, in the last section that we looked at a couple of weeks ago, uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 4 through 10, there are a lot of statements, statements like, but you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies who, of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Those are statements about things that are true here. Okay. In this section that I just read here today, there are a lot of commands. This is what you must do. Why do you think there are a lot of commands in this instead of just statements? Well, I think one of the things is the things that are said here are difficult to do. The things that are said here aren't easily done. In other words, if God didn't tell me some of these, if he didn't command some of these things, if these weren't imperatives to me, I would ignore them because they make me uncomfortable, because they make life hard. They make it difficult, okay? We're going to see a bunch of commands here today. So commanding verbs is what we've been reading here. And as I read through here, these are some of the things that you heard. You heard him command, abstain from passions of the flesh. Withdraw from them. Get away from them. Run away from them. Avoid them. Things that our lives, our bodies, our spirit, we want them. We want them. They're destructive for us, but we want them. He says, abstain from them. You are born of God, not of the world anymore. Okay, abstain. Pull away from that. He says, keep your conduct honorable. The way you live, the things you do, the things you say, the way you do them. Keep your conduct honorable to those you're around because you're representing more than just you. That's an important part of this today. He says, and here's a difficult one, be subject, or the nasty word is submit, be subject or submit to every human institution. And when you see human there, you're like, man, I know a lot of humans that are pretty messed up, okay? Um, be subject to those institutions, be subject to the emperor for us, the president, be subject to the governor? Be subject to our mayor? Be subject, to, yeah. Be subject to these human institutions within our land that are passing laws 
that sometimes I very much disagree with. Be subject to them. Submit to them. Okay? It's commanded. That's why it's commanded, because it's difficult for me to take this. Verse 16, live as people who are free. Boy, we love the word free. We love our freedom. I love my freedom. It's one of the reasons why I love living where I do. I feel like I can live more freely here than many other places in the world. Okay? So he says, live as people who are free. But he also says, don't use that as a, as a reason for sin. Okay? I mean, you can be free, but it doesn't mean you have to flaunt it. It doesn't mean that you can do things that are destructive. Live as free. Okay, now, there are four sentences, four commands that are all packed together in the same verse. They're really short, but they pack a lot in there. The first one, honor everyone. Okay, we've, we talked about that on the front pew here. Honor everyone. Show respect to everyone. How many people does that include? All, everyone. Honor everyone those you disagree with, those of different political parties, those that are annoying, those that you live with. <laughs> Honor everyone, okay? The next one, love the brotherhood, okay? So this word love actually is, the Greek word is agape, which means loyal love, steadfast love, faithful love. This is not just like the love like I have for my brother or the love I have for my wife, or the love I have for my country. Those are different Greek words. This, agape, is the kind of love that God shows. Faithful, steadfast, loyal love. Even when I'm a jerk, God loves me. Even when I continue to sin, and the thing He says don't do, He loves me. No matter what, He loves me. There's a song I sing with my little kids at night, and it's Everly right now. I don't sing it with some of the older ones, but you want to sing this song? Remember? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Alleluia, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And here's the part. Jesus loves me when I'm good, when I do the things I should. Jesus loves me when I'm bad, though it makes him very sad. Alleluia, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, that's enough. But that song, that children's song, I want my kids to have embedded in their minds and their hearts that no matter what, God faithfully, steadfastly, loyally loves them. He agapes them. That's the word that Jesus shows us with his disciples. Before he was crucified, he says, I want you to love one another. I'm setting an example that you love one another. God's kind of love that you serve one another, that you humble yourselves before one another, that you love the way God loves. Love the brotherhood in that way. Who's the brotherhood? That's the family of God, okay? Those that have called Christ their Lord and Savior, those of us that are disciples of His that follow Him, those of us that are in Christ, love those people. And that's different than the way we treat the rest of the world. It's a higher standard of love. Okay, then the next one, fear God. Fear God, two words in a short sentence that demand a lot. Fear, or maybe you could think of the word revere. Show reverence to Him. He's holy. He could wipe me off the face of the earth this afternoon like that. I should fear Him. My, my obedience, the way I live my life, should be dictated by the fact that I revere Him. I fear Him. Okay? He, not, he brought me into this world. He can take me out. Okay? That's who God is. So I should show a healthy fear, respect, 
reverence for God. And then finally, honor the emperor. Now let's go back to the, the historical context of which this letter was written. Most likely it was written during the reign of Nero. And if you remember a few things about that guy, that would be a hard person to honor. Okay. Now I have certain opinions about you know, our president today, I have a hard time honoring him, respecting him. Actually, I feel that way about a lot of the presidents through the years, except Ronald Reagan. I like that guy. Um, Abraham Lincoln. The ones far back are a little easier too, you know, George Washington. But in their day and time here, honoring the emperor, honoring Nero, this is the guy here that if you don't honor him, you could lose your job, you could lose your freedom, be thrown in prison, taken away from your family. You might lose your life. And Christians were doused in oil and put up on the top of pillars and lit up for Nero's garden parties to impress other rulers that have come for a banquet. Honor the emperor. Whether you like him or not, honor him, he says. That was to the emperor, and after Nero, what got worse, Domitian was looking for Christians with the intent to destroy. Sew them up in, do in animal skins and let wild dogs run after them in the Colosseum, that sort of thing. Okay? Peter tells us, God tells us through Peter, honor the emperor. Show respect to him. That's a tough one. I think that's why it's commanded so let's look at those last four sentences here as something that may be a, uh, a structure for our lives, the way we view things, okay? So is there sometimes a conflict between what the emperor or the king or the president says and what God says? This is where you nod your heads, okay? What do we do when that happens, when there's a conflict here? So let's look at this as these last four sentences as sort of a structure for us to live our lives, okay? First of all, we see honor everyone. Show respect to everyone regardless of how you feel about them. Regardless of race, regardless of political party, rich or poor, all that kind of stuff, whatever, however a person defines themselves, and there's a lot of ways in our culture today people define themselves and make their identity. Honor them. Show respect to them. Okay? Then the next one is love the brotherhood. And this is a different level. Honor is like I will res be respectful toward you. I will be kind toward you. I won't be a jerk. But loving the brotherhood, agape love, Faithful, steadfast, loyal love is different than just honoring. That kind of love is like, I will sacrificially self-deny myself for you. Not that I'm that great, but that's what Jesus called me to. That's what he did. And God calls you to do the same for me. There's a lot more of you than me. <laughs> um, that's what we're called to do. Loving the brotherhood, okay? That's at the top. That's, that's bigger than just honoring everyone. And then fearing God, that's at the top too. And it's interesting that when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest command, what did Jesus reply? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. He connected the two. The way we love others is the way we love God. The way we're loving God is by loving others. So the two are connected here, loving the brotherhood and fearing God. That's at the top of the triangle. And then you come down to that last sentence, honor the emperor. The way things are laid out, and I started this sermon earlier by talking English 101. Well, if, if you read back in ancient literature like this, the way this is laid out is this stair-stepping thing, because you can see honor and honor, these words are the same. These are two are like the bookends or the bottom corners here of the triangle. And what's in the middle is most important. It's more important than these other two things. When you see these two bookends, look to the middle to see. Okay? 
So we honor everyone and we honor the emperor, but up here at the top is where the good stuff is, okay? The most important stuff that we file away, that we love the brotherhood and that we fear God. If you don't do those things, there's no way you're going to honor everyone. There's no way you're going to honor the emperor the way you're going to honor the president or governor, those human institutions of our land, okay? So I think I want to just hone in on that word honor here for a second. That word honor kind of means respect that is due, okay? So the respect that is due to the mayor or the governor or the president, whatever these different political entities are, is different than the respect that I'm going to give to everyone here in my hometown. Okay? It's different there. So what is due? Well, think back again about those questions in uh, first century there in Asia Minor. What respect were they due? Did they have to pay due to the emperor then? Well, doesn't mean you've got to like the guy, but pay your taxes. Jesus said that. Okay? Same thing with us today. Okay? Regardless about how you feel about the president or various members of Congress and on and on it goes, we show respect and honor that is due them, not because of who they are, but because of the positions they fill, okay? I think we could deal with a healthy dose of respecting the office of the president if you don't have respect for the person, okay? So honor that is due. And then again, we look at loving the brotherhood. That's a faithful, selfless, sacrificial type of love that we show. And fearing God is reverence or awe. These are at the top of the pyramid for your life. So when you come into conflict in your own life with here's what is being pushed at the school, in my state, in our country, and I disagree with it. Because this is what the Word of God says. Who wins out? Well, I'm supposed to honor the emperor. You know, but you know what? At the top of the chain here is fearing God. That's number one. Okay? That's the hill you die on. And if the Word of God is not receiving the respect that is due, the honor that is due, God's number one. That's where you look to. I think when you live this way, you're going to have a tremendous amount of peace. I know a lot of people that don't follow it this way, that are only happy if their political party is in charge or things that are going on are the way they think it should go. They'll be freaking out if it doesn't match that way. But if I have God at the top here for me, it doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to trust him. He's on the throne, okay? And I'm going to stand with him and his word, and I will honor everybody. I will honor those human institutions that are around me. I'll show respect to them, but God's number one in my life. I have a tremendous amount of peace about that. And I know he's the one that's put those people in those positions. He knows what he's doing. When I don't understand what's going on, I can have peace about it. His ways are much higher than my ways, okay? All right. Why? Why should we do this? I mean, one way is what I just said. You can have peace in your life when you know who's in charge. But more than that, the text that I just read tells us some other things too. Verse 15 says, For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Okay? When you live like this, when you live according to Christ's ways, when you live doing good for Him... Good wins out, and foolishness just looks like foolishness. What is good and right comes to the top. Okay, That's one way. Verse 12 is probably even more important. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that, whenever you see a so that, it's like, here's why, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God. Here's what it's all about. If you follow Him, if you fear God, and He's number one in your life, other people are going to see that. Your good deeds will be evident, and eventually, people will glorify God. It'll happen here and in this life, 
Or if not, it'll happen in the next. Because one day, every tongue, every nation, everyone is going to confess Jesus is Lord. Okay? So here's the reason we should do these things that are very difficult. That's why He's commanded us to do these things, to show honor to all those that we may disagree with and have a difficult time with. It's because when we live according to His ways, God gets the glory and not me. And that's a good way to live. Okay, here's the last thing. I always kind of end with this here. What does living like an exile look like? And in this passage we just saw here today, it's this. One who treats everyone with honor, including politicians, so that they might glorify God. That's what we're called to today because of this passage. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Do you have peace with Him in charge? Or maybe your life is built on and your identity is built on things that are moving around. They're not solid. You can't count on them. They move this way and that. Today would be a great day to give your life to Jesus and that He would be Lord of your life so that you can have peace. You'll be right with the Creator and Sustainer of the universe. Today would be a good day to do that.